Well, good morning. Welcome to Community United Church, whether you are here in our sanctuary or you're watching us online right now through Facebook Live or perhaps sometime later, we, uh, you are welcome here. And we don't have a lot of announcements today, but there's a couple that I want to draw your attention to. If you will uh, go to the back of the bulletin, know also that the link for the bulletin should be in that Facebook feed. The uh, tech crew is working hard at getting everything you need. So a couple of uh, mentions. Um, we do want to be in the spirit of quiet contemplation. Even though Lent is over, um, Easter is not over. And as you come into the sanctuary, we're just asking that we try to keep things kind of to a dull roar, <laughs> if you will. And we're going to continue that. And I thank you. That's, that's working really nicely. People like to come in, kind of get centered and listen to uh, Cheryl play. And so it's, it's, it's lovely. I want to mention that the ladies outreach group will be having their potluck lunch, right? And it's going to be this uh, uh, Tuesday at noon. So uh, bring a dish to pass, see Carol Rogers uh, or any of the ladies uh, about what you might want to bring or give Carol a call. A couple things on the coming up side of the page. Um, we do have a resonate on May 4th and resonates have been amazing. So please uh, mark your calendars for that. I want to mention that we will have a short congregational meeting on May 8th. Notice May 8th is going to be a little bit of a busy day. We've got a pancake breakfast. Woohoo! Here for pancakes. Shout out to Tracy Davis. So loving our pancakes. And um, <laughs> Tracy and Mark are traveling today. Um, we do want you to just, it's, it's a short matter, a, a simple matter that we need to discuss as a congregation. It won't take long at all, but please plan on staying just a tiny bit after the regular service on May 8th. And then you can read the rest. And if there is nothing more, uh, fantastic. Um, we are, we're going to celebrate somebody really special in our congregation today who is having a birthday, and her name is Joy Johnson. So can we all sing every birthday for Joy? It's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right. Well, dear friends, uh, this second Sunday of Easter is sometimes called uh, Low Sunday. Now, I don't, I don't know exactly why. Maybe it's lower numbers because everybody's still sleeping off Easter and the, the Holy Week is a busy week. Um, or it's, you know, you're feeling lower. I don't know why it's called that, but um, I'm here to tell you that the second Sunday of Easter and, and the many Sundays that follow right up until Pentecost are meant to be jubilant celebrations. We are still in the Easter, uh, the Easter season. So this is not anything like all oh, Easter's over, we're done. And I'm really glad because we still have Easter stuff up at the house. So <laughs> we're still uh, in sync. But I want us to remember that, you know, we may not have seen the risen Savior 2,000 years ago. We may not have been the ones to, you know, potentially reach out to him and try and touch him, but Christ is with us. We, we have never known another time other than after Easter, okay? So we live in the season of Easter, and let's remember that every day Christ has the power to give us the assurance of our place with him forever, and so with that, let's center our hearts and minds for our music this morning.
Thank you, ladies. That was lovely. Please join me in the invocation as it's printed in your bulletin. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God, our Creator, Christ, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit, our eternal advocate and friend. Living God, as the risen Christ came into the locked room of the first disciples, may your word enter us into us by the power of your Holy Spirit. May we who have not seen truly believe in the truth of the resurrection. And may we find ourselves be healed and transformed into channels of healing for others. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And now please stand as you're able for opening him. Crown him with many crowns. Music. 
us pray. Holy and loving God, Christ, our resurrected Savior, Holy Spirit, our companion and advocate, be with us today as we seek knowledge and understanding of your word. May we continue in our celebration of the resurrection, and may we be open to your leading in our lives and of our spirits. We do not know the stops we may make along the pathway of our lives, yet we know our ultimate destination is to be joined as one with you. We ask for you to be with us in our dark nights as well as in our bright and shining days. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing Christ Arose. Spirit, whom God has given to those 
to be a kingdom, free serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Omega. I am the Alpha says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Responsorial song, poem, Psalm is 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him, his mighty ferment. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please stand for the Gloria and please remain standing.
This morning is from John 20, verses 19 through 31. Listen to the words. Listen to the wisdom of God speak to you personally through these scriptures. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand and his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, once again, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord am I God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. My friends, these are the words of God for the people of God. Come, Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. <clears throat> so, happy Easter tide. Now, it's not happy Easter. I'm not a week behind, but happy Easter tide. So we are now, as I've mentioned, in the season of Easter. And thank goodness, because our house still has, you know, remnants of Easter uh, about. So, um, but we're still celebrating Easter. Because Easter tide, or the season of Easter, is actually the period of 50 days spanning from Easter Sunday to Pentecost Sunday. It's celebrated or has been celebrated traditionally as a single joyful feast. And in some traditions it's called the Great Lord's Day. So each Sunday of the season is treated as a Sunday of Easter. And so just like the story of Jesus does not stop at his resurrection, our study and wonder about him continues on. So as you will have gleaned from the bulletin uh, from Angel who took the Sunday school class through and certainly from uh, hearing and reading the Gospel of John today, uh, it's, it's a day all about Thomas, isn't it? Thomas is the speaker and what remains is one of my favorite Bible verses. He says, unless I see the nail holes in his hands and put my hand in his side, I won't believe it. 
But Jesus says, blessed is he who has not seen, but yet has believed. That's my favorite thing. And Thomas is skeptical, right? Uh, and if we're honest about it, that's how we remember Thomas. I mean, it's just how we're remembering him as doubting, perhaps even disbelieving. But let's look a little bit deeper into the character of Thomas, shall we? So that we understand how it is that he's in the place that he is at and why his initial skepticism as that group was gathered, cloistered even in the upper room, how that skepticism can lead us to discovery. So we do know that Thomas is skeptical by nature. This is all through the gospel. Scripture tells us that at least at times, Thomas believed with some difficulty. One day when Jesus was preaching on the other side of the Jordan River, we know that that their dear friend Lazarus became gravely ill. Pastor Rich uh, preached about this last week. We heard about uh, Lazarus, and we've heard it uh, a lot. Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha, sent for Jesus to come and heal him at his home, which was close to Jerusalem. Yet even when Jesus received word of this, you know, he kind of dawdled, right? He kind of, like, didn't rush around and, and, and go and run to, to Lazarus. He sort of hung out for a couple of days, if you read that. The disciples figured it was because the last time Jesus was in Jerusalem, you know, he was getting threats. I mean, it was dangerous, right? The disciples were very protective of him. So after a couple of days, Jesus announces he will go to Lazarus, and the disciples protested, right? They protested because of the danger of going into that area. And Thomas even said, let us go also, that we may die with him. And he meant die with Jesus. So that pessimism, right? The, like the glass is half empty, the attitude of melancholy. It seemed to be who Thomas was and how, you know, sort of defines him at this point. He could see nothing except disaster ahead. And I mean, rightly so, right, in, in this case. But you know, he had traveled with Jesus. He, he still was skeptical, yet all he knew about Jesus and Jesus' nature. In John 14, we hear Jesus assuring his disciples of eternal life, saying, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And Thomas responds, and this is a paraphrase, Lord, we don't even know where you're going. How can we know the way? Thomas, Thomas. Thomas is a realist who just wants to be sure, right? Is there anything really wrong with that? Well, I don't think so. We need to remind ourselves that there were several who were skeptical about the resurrection. I mean, there are different accounts in the Gospels as we compare them, but, you know... Rich points it out every Easter, and I love it. The women were the first to bring the good news that Jesus had indeed risen from the dead because his body was not in that tomb. Luke's gospel tells us that the apostles dismissed their story as an idle tale. Huh. And so it was on what we now think of as Easter evening that Jesus appeared to all of the disciples except Thomas. So last Sunday night. How long has this past week seemed to you? It's been kind of a long week, but I wonder how long seven days seemed to Thomas. For throughout these seven days, Thomas had not had the opportunity to see the risen Christ as the others had. I'm guessing but it must have been agony for Thomas knowing that whatever activity took him away a week ago, the night of the resurrection, it, preventing him, it prevented him from bearing witness to seeing and talking to Jesus, the risen Savior. Thomas, always wanting to be sure, had been deprived of that privilege which only added to his skepticism and really, it missed, he might have missed the greatest opportunity of his entire life. Surely, he must have thought, Jesus knew more than anything else that, that I want to believe he has risen. 
Why hasn't he given me the same proof that he gave to the others? These several days must have been really dark for Thomas and very bleak. So some of you may be familiar with the term dark night of the soul. Some, okay, maybe not others. Well, let's, let's enlighten us today. You know, it's a term in modern uh, times that's been used in psychology, it's been used in theology, and sometimes in our conversations to mean a period of time and a state of being where an individual is truly in the valley. Okay? He or she may be literally depressed, despondent, or, you know, just in a kind of figurative darkness where nothing may be moving, where the future is unknown, and the person is most likely stuck and may see no way out of this state. And you know, the origin of this phrase, dark night of the soul, and writings on the subject go all the way back to the 16th century when a Spanish mystic and saint, John of the Cross, wrote an eight stanza poem about the quest to be in perfect union with God as, you know, as it's possible to be in perfect union with God on earth. It's almost a love letter to God. But this union, this harmony with God comes after the dark night of the soul. And actually, this was not even the name of his original poem. It was just called the Declaration, or simply Dark Night at that time. This St. John's premise was that there are stages in which a soul experiences uh, on its journey to perfect union with God, the sensory part and the spiritual part. And it gets into a lot of different premises, and we don't need to look at that. But he actually refers to it at that time as a joyful journey. It's a joyful journey to be in a dark night. Huh. Kind of hard to, to understand, right? But modern definitions of what now is known as dark night of the soul lean much toward the idea of a spiritual crisis in the journey toward finding God. And I think that as modern Christians, you know, modern people, we can identify with that, at least, you know, at, at times. And I don't know if the disciple Thomas experienced an actual dark night of the soul in that week that found him in despair and in doubt or skeptical about the resurre resurrection of Jesus, but it sure sounds like what some of us have experienced in our lives. You know, I may have experienced a dark night of the soul many years ago now, many years ago when, you know, uh, Dean and I were trying to find a church congregation. We couldn't find one. And it's not a good feeling, and many of you have been to other churches, and you're, you're missing that part which allows you to be yourself, to be everything that you can be, to serve in the ways you want to serve, or to not serve, or just to be part of everything, and we were missing it. It was, it was a dark place for a time. And I remember very specifically asking God, you know, is this it? Can I, can we ever truly be whole, ever truly be ourselves and serve our God. But you know, I left it up to God at that point. And, and, and I consider it to be a kind of a, a dark night because I didn't know, we didn't know, if, you know, what might be next, if anything. And it's hard to take steps when you don't know where to go. We merely followed God's guiding on a daily basis where God would lead. And God did because we're here with you. No small thing. You know, it may have been or will be like that for you at some point. Knowing that change must come. Perhaps even praying for change. Whatever that change may be. Then being led by God to a place of which you are not yet aware and in the meantime, finding yourself in a state of turmoil, confusion, uncertainty, and sometimes fear. You might be someone who is actively seeking change in your life, change toward a better existence, change for a closer understanding of God, or a closer relationship toward what is seen and what is unseen. You might pray, you might fret, you lament, you cry, all the while asking God 
to fix it. It may very well be your dark night of the soul. Thomas emerged from his very dark night once Jesus spoke to him in the upper room. This time, Thomas was there. It's a week later. Thomas is there. And Thomas, being Thomas, expresses his doubt and his skepticism. That is, until he hears the voice of Jesus saying to them, Peace be with you. And Jesus says, Thomas, do not doubt, but believe. And it doesn't appear, if you look at the scriptures, it doesn't even appear that Thomas even actually had to touch Jesus. It doesn't say. He might not have. Hearing his voice, he knew. So let, let us understand that, that Jesus didn't condemn Thomas for his doubts. Jesus knew that once Thomas found his way through the wilderness of questions and confusion, through Thomas's own dark night, that Thomas would then be surer than practically anyone else, right? There was a reason Thomas did not see the risen Jesus until a week later. Thomas's witness of Jesus was special. And it's a lesson for all of us that our patience and our willingness for God to lead in our lives in God's time can be truly miraculous. Our study of Thomas can be a comfort to us because Thomas didn't remain stuck in disbelief. He didn't remain stuck in the darkness. And neither do we have to remain stuck. Trust in Jesus to see you through your darkness and through your own personal mysteries, whatever they are. And I've said this before, doubt is not the opposite of faith. Doubt is an essential ingredient in your faith journey. So we may experience the darkness. Many of us have. And we, we likely should knowing and believing that the light of unity with Christ will follow. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you know that we've had a hard time believing in all things that we cannot see. You also know the struggles we face, each one of us, as we wade through our own confusion and our own doubt. Help us to trust you, to rely on you, to lead us through our darkness, which will lead us ever closer to you. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Could you guys stand a little more that way? So that Patty can actually see what, no, like slide that way a little bit more. So Patty can see. So she doesn't have to stand with her back to me. Okay, awesome.
princes again. Princes and paupers, sons and daughters, kneel at the throne of grace. Losers and winners, saints and sinners, one day. me now in our communion liturgy as printed in your bulletin. People of God, we continue in our celebration of the resurrection by accepting our place at Christ's table, believing 
as even Thomas believed in receiving the Holy Spirit. Here at this table, food for the body also becomes food for the Spirit. And this is the table of grace. There is room around it for every soul that was and is and is to come. We come to the table as people who are learning the way of Christ. We confess that we are not always right, but we share this faith that those who trust in Christ Jesus will grow in the assurance of God's eternal love. And so here at this table, we take the bread and we take the cup and we ask the Holy Spirit to make it for us communion with the living Christ, body and blood, love poured out forever. Here at this table, we remember that Christ indeed gave his entire life as an outpouring of God's love, a love that will one day renew all things. Amen. Take and eat the communion of the body of Christ. drink the communion of the blood of Christ. The Lord be with you. Now, I want to thank you for bringing your prayer praises and uh, prayers forward, whether they be in the sanctuary or online. Today, we want to have uh, praises for a new job opportunity. Praise God. Prayers for healing for our own Kimberly Perrin. Oh, Kim, we are with you and praying for you. Kim, uh, prayers for James and Rod Neese. Prayers for those struggling with health issues, both mental and physical. Holy and loving God, in your wisdom, meet all these needs in the perfect way of your grace. God, hear our prayer. For all those who cannot see you and yet desire to believe, God, hear our prayer. For the victims of war in our world, for the people of Ukraine who have left their homes, and for those who remain to fight for freedom, God, hear our prayer. For the victims of prejudice and those who have lost loved ones due to senseless violence, God, hear our prayer. For those who need healing and hope, who cannot see the possibility of renewal, God, hear our prayer. And for all that we hold, in the silence of our hearts, we come to you in the confidence of quiet, O oh God. And we lift our petitions privately to you. your blessings upon all people. Please move the mountains in our lives or help to move us so that we might be fully at peace. And this we do pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us continue with our Easter celebration for all that God has done for us and continues to do in our lives. And as you give of yourself and your resources, 
Please always give with a grateful heart. Congratulations. I hear she, she did really well, so thank you so much for, for acknowledging Lauren. And thank you to the, the musicians today, Cheryl and Shelly and all the ladies. the ladies. Wasn't that amazing? Yay, ladies. That sounded really good. Thank oh, you so much. We should also shout out to Dina holding it down back there. Yeah, Dina the Tech Dina! Woo! <laughs> all right, nice work. All right, please join me in our departing prayers printed in your bulletin. Holy One, we give you thanks and praise for the wisdom and belief you gave your disciples so long ago and that you give us today. May we go in a spirit of celebration for all that God has done, having received the new life that Christ has breathed into all of us. Amen. Our closing hymn is Lift High the Cross.
Sunday of Easter. May each and every one of you be filled with the grace and peace of the God who is and was and is to come. And with the spirit of Jesus Christ, God's faithful witness, who loves us, who travels with us, and who ultimately frees us from all darkness. Amen.